Rising from the Baltic Sea, Krieger's Flak is more than Denmark's largest offshore wind farm. It's a pioneering energy bridge between Denmark and Germany, helping balance electricity prices and strengthen energy security for both countries, all while providing a clean alternative to fossil fuel. Europe seeks to secure its energy future and offshore renewables are set to play a big role. The EU member states aim to increase offshore power capacity 18-fold by 2050. But getting there will not be simple. The sector faces some major challenges. One of them, the high cost of building and maintaining offshore wind farms. We're here with Giles Dixon, the leader of Wind Europe, which speaks for over 600 companies in Europe's wind sector. Today at Krieger's Flak, he's joined by several officials and industry leaders. As global tensions push Europe to stand on its own feet, offshore wind has become much more than just a clean power source. Europe needs more energy security. Yeah, it doesn't want to be importing its energy from unreliable suppliers outside of Europe. It's getting out of the Russian gas. It needs more homegrown renewable electricity like this to have energy security, which means economic security and national security. The EU plans to increase its offshore wind power capacity from 20 gigawatts today to 360 gigawatts by 2050. It's a huge undertaking, supported by major innovations and modernization throughout the sector. At the port of Esbjerg on Denmark's west coast, the control center of the Swedish multinational energy company Vattenfall manages over 1,200 wind turbines across four countries. Digital tools and algorithms help optimize energy flows and address issues swiftly. Next to developing the wind farms, we also need to have the systems developed so that they can continue to support and being efficient. So an automization of some of our processes is important for us to continue to follow uh, the growth of the number of turbines. The offshore wind turbines aren't just multiplying. They're growing taller and more powerful. That means ports need to expand too. Esbjerg, already responsible for shipping 80% of offshore wind power capacity installed in Europe, is now reclaiming extra land, preparing to meet tomorrow's demands. One of the challenges with offshore wind is they need very large port space or port capacity. And that's also why there isn't sufficient offshore wind ports in, in Europe today. We are lucky here that we have been able to develop the port in conformity to what's needed for the industry and will also be very, very, very busy going forward. Getting these massive turbines out to sea takes special installation vessels. They have extendable legs that reach down to the seabed, creating a stable platform for the construction. As components grow larger and heavier, companies are investing in new vessels or upgrading existing ones like the Wind Osprey, operated by Danish offshore services company Cadillac. Captain Matthew Christie tells us his ship rarely sits still these days, moving from one wind farm to the next in a non-stop cycle of construction. Everything's getting bigger, that's for sure. More energy production, but also bigger and heavier components. For instance, we've just uh, had a new crane fitted. It's longer and has a a bigger lifting capacity because the tower sections are taller now. These specialized vessels don't come cheap. A single day's operation can cost hundreds of thousands of euros. Cutting costs is on everyone's mind. The industry's biggest meetup is the Wind Europe annual event, which this year took place in Copenhagen. Many of the innovations on show tackled harsh realities of generating power offshore. Saltwater and stormy weather constantly attack the turbines, and fixing them at sea isn't as simple as on land. Operation and maintenance make up nearly a third of offshore wind's total cost, as Simon Watson, professor of wind energy systems from TU Delft, explains. They're expensive, wind farms. The ones that are out at sea also aren't terribly accessible either. 
because you have to get a boat out there uh, or a helicopter and that's restricted to periods when it's not too windy and the waves aren't too high of course so so that means that the cost of maintenance is actually quite a large fraction of the total levelized cost of energy and there's a big interest in trying to reduce that to try and make wind energy offshore more cost effective could robots be part of the solution this climbing machine is built to inspect and repair turbine blades faster and more safely than humans Recently tested off the Scottish coast for offshore use, it was developed by Latvian company Air Rones with support from the European Union. Air Rones is now producing dozens of these custom robots monthly at their Riga factory to meet surging industry demands. The largest blades in the world are exceeding 120 meters, which is way longer than this facility. So imagine to do the job by hand, so we optimize the robots for the speed, so the turbines have far less downtime while we're doing that job. Less downtime means more electricity produced and lower costs for consumers. These robots can inspect turbine blades for damage, sand the leading edge, and apply protective coatings to shield them from the elements. The long-term vision is a future where each turbine could have its own maintenance robot, keeping it spinning with minimal human help. As we progress, as the robots become smarter and smarter themselves, we try to implement different kind of algorithms so the operator would be more like an kind of overseeing the AI engines doing the work and just not so much being involved himself uh, moving the robot left or right. Driven by the innovations and policy support, Europe's wind sector is set to grow fast. By 2030, onshore and offshore wind power is expected to employ more than 900,000 Europeans, pumping over 100 billion euros into the EU economy. There's the jobs, the growth, the investment that comes locally from building and operating these wind farms and manufacturing the turbines and all the equipment and the grid equipment that is part of wind energy. Building bigger wind farms in deeper waters while keeping costs down remains a complex challenge to solve. But as Europe looks to break free from foreign oil and gas, these offshore giants could be the breath of fresh air the continent needs.